Hello, welcome to A Very Brief History of Yuri, first presented at the Tokyo Comics Showcase Volume 1 on May 3rd, 2016. And when I say very brief, I mean we'll cover 100 years in six slides, so let's begin. We will begin our history of Yuri with the works of Yoshia Nobuko-san. We begin with her not because she was the first or only person to write about desire between women, but because her stories standardize the way we read and watch and speak of Yuri. It is because of her works, Yana Uro no Nishoujo and Hana Monogatari, we have scenes, like a piano duet, that have become de rigueur in Yuri manga and anime. Without Akitsu and Akiko in the attic room, we would not have had Utena and Anshi in the tower at Otori. Without Yoshia sensei seeds, our garden would be less full of flowers. Stories that ran in girls' magazines of the 1930s, like Otome no Minato, centered the S relationship as a form of sisterhood beyond blood ties and a deep, intense, almost relationship that still is the core of many Yuri stories. It is almost impossible to remove the big sister, little sister relationship from modern Yuri and still have it make sense. Because in so much Yuri, there are no lesbians. Sisterhood is still a common image. In the mid-20th century, modern girls could live happily within traditional S roles, as in Sakura Namiki. But women who loved women were tragic but noble figures. Being a girl prince meant that the princess could not live a happy life as a woman, something readers learned from Sapphire in Ribbon no Kishi, and her spiritual descendant, Oscar from Rose of Versailles. Simone in Shiroi Han no Futari, the manga I consider to be the first truly Yuri manga, and Claudine discovered that, even for a strong woman, the act of loving another woman was, in and of itself, destructive. To love another woman as a woman, a woman could not be a prince, as Armenia found out in Paros no Ken. Something had to break under the pressure. Modern girls were becoming postmodern women, and gender and sexuality were being discussed, not in the same terms we use now, but for the first time people read stories of women who are strong and queer. Magical girls who rescued princesses became more common in the late 20th century. By the 1990s, girl princes are noble and charming. They combine masculinity and femininity in a new hybrid form. No one was being forced to pass as a prince anymore. They were heroes as themselves. We can look back to Sailor Uranus and Tenjo Utena for subversions of the magical girl heroine archetype. Utena wanted to do the rescuing herself, while Haruka wanted only to fulfill what she felt was a fate that burdened her. Neither of them had any intention of waiting around for a prince to rescue them, or living as a tragic girl prince themselves. In both Sailor Moon and Shoujo Kakame Utena, magical girl princes lived lives that were bound by fate from the beginning, but unlike their predecessors, they could escape the prisons of their fate and ride off to a happy future in a car or in the form of a car. In the late 20th century, girls not only made their place as the hero of the story, some of them got the girl in the end. In the early 2000s, the light novel series Maria Samagami Teru almost immediately gave birth to new versions of the old S stories. While Marimita itself was neither sexualized nor a true fantasy series, in series that came after it, private schools become fantasy worlds where men are forbidden and Takarazuka top star couples rule schools named after non-existent saints with arcane rituals and titles. In these fantasy schools for male readers, old rules still applied. Women would cease to love women when they graduated unless they actively defied tradition. It is in stories for girls that women find salvation in their love. For example, Sato Sei, having experienced a tragic lesbian love, grows from the experience and finds herself stronger and more mature for having loved and lost. In Yuri for male readers, we find the giant robots and rape and horse races of Kanazuki no Miko and Strawberry Panic. In Yuri for girls, such as Blue Friends and Nobara no Mori no Otome Tachi, relationships between girls heal past hurts and allow them, like Sei, to grow. 
These grandchildren of S continue to be popular in Yuri for all audiences. There is power in the fantasy of a woman's world, and peeping through the gauze curtain of that world continues to be a popular erotic thing. The new popularity of Yuri creates, for the first time, a market for Yuri manga magazines. Starting with the launch of Yuri Shimai in 2003, followed by Yuri Hime magazine in 2005, this new trend peaked in 2014 with three Yuri magazines being published at once, Comic Yuri Hime, Pure Yuri Anthology Harari, and Tsubomi. For the first time, manga artists who had been drawing doujinshi for years finally found a home for their stories, and new artists, who had never lived in a world without Yuri, were able to find an avenue to publication. Although not all the magazines have survived financially, many of the authors have gone on to publish Yuri elsewhere, and new anthologies keep being created. They fill an important need for both creators and readers. Some Yuri artists are going straight to online publication with series, we haven't yet seen a successful online Yuri publication, but I don't think that's too far off. As I said at the beginning, while Yuri frequently tells stories of girls in love, there is very little lesbian identity in Yuri. Stories that focused on first love and school years rarely move past recognition of feelings as love, or maybe sometimes coming out as liking girls. More rarely, there are stories about adult women making a life together, but in recent years, there have been more out lesbians telling their own stories. Even back in the 1990s, there were stories of lesbian life, like Moonlight Flowers, even if the word lesbian isn't specifically used. There's identity as a woman who loves, lives with another woman. Sometimes a Yuri story can be very honest about women loving women, like Fufu, which premiered in comic Yuri Hime S, which was targeted to the male Yuri audience. It is with a new generation of out lesbian creators that lesbian lives are finally truly being seen in Yuri. Nakamura Sensei told a raw and emotional story of a lesbian and the woman she killed for in Gunjo, and Takamiya Jin Sensei often features out lesbian characters and even uses lesbian slang in her Yuri manga. One of the most amazing current trends is the very personal non-fiction comic essays by and about lesbians, which tell real stories about real people and their real lesbian lives. Here in the present, we have both fiction and non-fiction that finally merges lesbian voices and jury. What the future will hold is unknown, but I expect it will be very interesting, and I will blog about it at Okazu. Thank you very much, and do visit us at Yurikan and Okazu.